giant underground city found by archaeologists under Grand Canyon. Archaeologists have made a shocking discovery beneath the Grand Canyon, uncovering a vast underground city of unknown origin and purpose. The size and complexity of the city have left experts baffled and have sparked theories of a lost civilization. Join us as we delve into the mystery of this massive underground discovery. But before we begin, here is a quick knowledge check for history geeks. What is the age of the Grand Canyon? Share your answers in the comment section below. Here we begin. The Smithsonian Institute, under the direction of Professor S. A. Jordan, is currently conducting extensive explorations of an underground citadel found in the Grand Canyon. These explorations aim to uncover every detail of this ancient site and to understand the history of the people who live there. The team is delving nearly a mile underground, about 1,480 feet below the surface, into the long main passage and finding multiple chambers with many passageways branching off like the spokes of a wheel. Several hundred rooms have been discovered, accessible through passageways leading from the main passage. One passageway has been explored for 854 feet and another for 634 feet. His Story he was alone on the Colorado River in a boat, looking for minerals. He noticed stains in the sedimentary formation about 2,000 feet above the riverbed, 42 miles up from the El Tovar Crystal Canyon. There was no trail until this point, but he made it with great difficulty. The cave's mouth was above a shelf that obscured it from view from the river. There are steps leading from this entrance about 30 yards to what was the river level when the cavern was inhabited. He became interested when he saw the chisel marks on the wall inside the entrance, secured his gun, and entered. During that journey, he returned several hundred feet along the main passage until he reached the crypt, where he discovered the mummies. He stood up and photographed one of these with a flashlight. He gathered several relics, which he transported down Colorado to Yuma, from which he shipped to Washington along with information about the discovery. The Passages The main passageway is about 12 feet wide, narrowing to 9 feet at the far end. The first side passages branch off to the right and left, about 57 feet from the entrance, along which are several rooms about the size of ordinary living rooms today, though some are 30 by 40 feet square. These are entered through oval-shaped doors and ventilated through the walls into the passages by round air spaces. The walls are approximately 3 feet 6 inches thick. The passages are chiseled or hewn as straight as an engineer would design. Many of the room's ceilings converge in the center. The side passages near the entrance run at a sharp angle from the main hall, but toward the back, they gradually turn right. The Shrine Deep within the cave, a hundred feet from the entrance, lies the Cross Hall, a long chamber that houses the idol of a god. The statue is of an oriental figure, sitting cross-legged, holding a lotus flower or lily in each hand. The features resemble those of Buddha, but it is unclear which religion it represents. Some scientists believe it may have been used in worship by ancient Tibetan people. Surrounding the main idol are smaller statues, some with intricate designs and others with twisted and distorted forms, possibly representing good and evil. Two large cactus statues stand on either side of the god's platform, all carved from hard, marble-like rock. In the opposite corner of the cross hall, copper tools were found, indicating that the ancient people had mastered the lost art of hardening the metal. Charcoal and other materials were also discovered, suggesting they had knowledge of metalworking techniques. Among the other artifacts found in the cave are vases, urns, cups made of copper and gold with intricate designs. There are also pieces of enameled ware and glazed pottery. Another path leads to granaries similar to those found in oriental temples containing various seeds. One large storehouse has yet to be explored as it can only be accessed from above, 
with two copper hooks protruding from the edge. The granaries are built with a hard, cement-like material. A mysterious gray metal was also found in the cave, which scientists cannot identify. It has the appearance of platinum. Scattered on the floor are small yellow stones known as cat's eyes, engraved with the head of a Malay figure. The Hieroglyphics On all the urns, or walls over doorways and tablets of stone found by the image, are the mysterious hieroglyphics, the key to which the Smithsonian Institute hopes yet to discover. The engraving on the tablets is most likely related to the people's religion. In southern Arizona, similar hieroglyphics have been discovered. Unfortunately, only two animals can be found among the pictorial writings. One is of the prehistoric variety, the crypt. The tomb or crypt where the mummies were discovered is one of the largest chambers, with walls slanting back at an angle of about 35 degrees. There are tiers of mummies on these, each with its own hewn shelf. A small bench with copper cups and broken sword fragments is at the center of each. Some mummies are covered in clay, while the rest are wrapped in a bark fabric. It is worth noting that all of the mummies examined thus far have been male, with no children or females buried here. This leads to the assumption that the outer section was the warrior's barracks. Among the discoveries were no animal bones, skins, clothing, or bedding. Many of the rooms are devoid of everything except water vessels. One room, approximately 40 by 700 feet, was most likely the main dining hall, as cooking utensils were discovered there. What these people ate is unknown, though it is assumed that they came south in the winter and farmed in the valleys before returning north in the summer. The caverns could have comfortably housed up to 50,000 people. According to one theory, the current Indian tribes in Arizona are descended from the cave's serfs or slaves. Undoubtedly, people who reached a high level of civilization lived here thousands of years before the Christian era. The timeline of human history is riddled with gaps. An Indian legend. About this story, it is worth noting that the Hopi Indians have a tradition that their ancestors once lived in an underworld in the Grand Canyon until a schism developed between the good and the bad, the people of one heart and the people of two hearts. Their chief, Machetto, advised them to leave the underworld, but there was no way out. The chief then caused a tree to grow and pierced the underworld's roof, and the people of one heart climbed out. They grew grain and corn along the Paisisvai, Red River, Colorado. They sent a message to the Temple of the Sun requesting peace, goodwill, and rain for people of one heart. That messenger never returned. But today at sundown in Hopi villages, old men of the tribe can be seen out on the housetops gazing toward the sun, looking for the messenger. When he returns, their lands and ancestral home will be returned to them. That is the custom. Among the animal engravings in the cave is the image of a heart over the spot where it is located. W. E. Rollins, the artist, learned about the legend while living with the Hopi Indians for a year. There are two theories about the Egyptians' origins. One theory holds that they originated in Asia, while another holds that the racial cradle was in the Upper Nile region. Kiren, an Egyptologist, believed that the Egyptians were of Indian origin. The Grand Canyon discoveries may shed more light on human evolution and prehistoric ages. What do you think of the mysterious ancient city discovered? The answer to our question is 6 million years old. Subscribe for more.